Tonight, the Pirates begin a 10-game Western swing here in Denver, Colorado, where at Coors Field, it is game one of a three-game series between the Pirates and the Colorado Rockies. Take a look at the National League Central Division standings. The Cardinals losing to the Cubs earlier today, so now the Pirates stand alone in second place, three games behind the Milwaukee Brewers. Hi again, everybody, with Bob Walk. I'm Tim Neverett. Robbie and Smikowski will join us in just a little bit. A rematch between Brett Anderson and Charlie Morton. And, Bob, the last time Charlie pitched, he did a pretty good job holding the Rockies to just two runs. Yeah, he did a fine job, but really uh, pitched well enough to get a win, but ended up getting just that no decision. But I expect Charlie to, to be at his best again. You know, in this ballpark, this is the kind of a, a ballpark where you, you really need that sinker baller to get the ground balls, to get the double plays, as you see there. And uh, that's his forte. I mean, that, that's that's his strength. So I think that uh, having Charlie for this opening game of this series is an absolutely perfect uh, way to get things rolling. And for the Rockies, some big bats out of the lineup. Our Allegheny Health Network injury update. Troy Tulowitzki was injured in Pittsburgh. He's on the 15-day DL. Justin Morno had some neck issues. He's been placed on the DL. And Michael Kadire has been out for a while with a shoulder injury. So no Tulowitzki, Morno, or Kadire for the Rockies tonight. But still a rather potent lineup here in the thin air of the Mile High City. And the Pirates last time swept the Rockies in Pittsburgh. The Battle and Bucks came back three straight nights. Are there more comebacks in store versus Colorado? Stand by and find out our lineups and first pitch coming up from the Mile High City. Pirates trailing all three of those games against the Rockies 
last weekend, came back and won all three, sweeping them. This time the venue has changed to Coors Field in Denver, where we get you set for game one of this three-game series between the Pirates and the Rockies. The bullpen was the big difference, and Bob, you look at the numbers of the Pirates' bullpen, that 0, zero, zero ERA, a big difference. Well, it certainly was a very exciting way to win those three games with the the comeback wins, but hopefully we can do a little bit better against the starting pitching, uh, maybe even as good as we were able to do against their bullpen. What a difference in those pins. And the starter tonight, Brett Anderson, was very good. He was Oakland's opening day starter a year ago. Had the curveball going. He struck out a season-high eight. Yeah, we really didn't do a, a whole lot uh, with some of those pitches in the heart of the strike zone. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting another shot at, uh, at him uh, this evening. I think that that curveball, when it's left over the plate for a strike, uh, we'll have better luck with it this time. We've already seen it. So we're in the Mile High City waiting for the first pitch of this ball game. Let's send you back to Pittsburgh. Paul Alexander is standing by with his studio game break. Nestled up into the Rocky Mountains. And here at Coors Field, a little bit of a rain shower passed through, but an on-time start expected. Toyota starting lineup for the Pirates. Gregory Polanco will lead off. And Josh Harrison, Andrew McCutcheon in the three spot. Ten extra base hits and ten runs batted in in 17 career games here at Coors Field. Gabby Sanchez will back clean up. Neil Walker fifth. And Martin Mercer and Brent Morrell makes his first start with the Pirates. Charlie Morton will bat ninth and do the pitching. Pirates tonight facing left-hander Brett Anderson for the second time. There you see Anderson's numbers on the season. Uh, sp spent most of the season on the table. It's just a 
uh, a couple of starts since coming off. Uh, this is just his third. He's uh, been giving up a, quite a few hits when he's been out there this year. I'm hoping we can do a better job of that in this game. I, I thought that last game uh, the, he left a lot of balls, a lot of breaking balls up in the strike zone or out over the plate that were hittable, and we just didn't do a very good job with it. He relied on his breaking ball quite a bit in the last start. Struck out the last three men he faced before being lifted after 110 pitches. So Gregory Polanco standing in to start this ball game. Anderson's first pitch is swung on foul back, and we are underway in Denver. Had eight total strikeouts in the ball game. Season high for him. 253, the average for Polanco. Yesterday, the Pirates had a day off. The annual Pirates Charities Golf Outing at Fox Chapel. Another great success yesterday. Then the Bucks flew out here to Denver. And starting this West Coast swing, this Western swing. And Clint Hurdle, former Rockies manager, always likes this trip. He and his family get to renew a lot of friendships when they are here. Polanco, bouncer to second base. LeMahieu is there and there's one out. DJ LeMahieu. With the infield assist, and there's one gone for the Pirates in the first inning. Defensively for the Rockies, brought to you by Volvo. In the outfield left to right, Corey Dickerson, Charlie Blackman, Carlos Gonzalez. Nolan Arenado's at third base. Josh Rutledge will be at short for a little while. LeMahieu and Ben Paulson called up from AAA at first base. Waleen Rosario doing the catching. And Carlos Gonzalez, big bat in the outfield. He's been battling. Coming back from an injury, starting to get his swing back. He did have a game a week ago tonight where he struck out a career high five times against the Pirates. Josh Harrison swinging a miss there. That was a pretty good location on that curveball, down on the shoe tops. One ball and one strike. When he leaves that pitch up. That's when we need to do something about it. Gets it up above the knees in that strike zone. Anderson finally works quickly and a ground ball to second base. Two down. So two ground balls to LeMahieu. This will bring up Andrew McCutcheon to face Anderson. Anderson without a win, 0 and 3, but during his career, he's got 37 starts prior to this one. He's 24 and 6. Last year's opening day starter. For the Oakland Athletics. But again, he has had an injury history. Kutchin bounces this one off the plate foul for strike one. Warm day here in Denver, a little breezy. A little shower before the game cooled it off just a little bit. It cooled it off just ahead Not of the game. at all now. Pitch to McCutcheon. It's fouled back. The rain came down. Fans headed for cover, but the grounds crew continued to water the field. They they knew it was just going to pass. So they just stood in there. Yeah, they stopped for a moment, got on the cell phone, and then, uh, decided to keep on watering. I think they called uh, John Wainer to see what the weather is going to yeah, be. Yeah, that's who you have to call. That's protocol. Call Rock and check the weather. He'll give it to you. He must watch the Weather Channel all day. That and sleep. One, two, pop back and into the seats. Rosario ran out of room and it just climbed the backstop. Fred Anderson held the Pirates to one run on four hits over seven innings. And when you look at that last series, the starters were pretty good, but the bullpen was. Roughed up. Here's the one two to McCutcheon. He's got Kutch being a little defensive now. He's really expanded his strike zone. He's fallen behind with that one two count. They chased fastball downstairs. And Walker waiting in the dugout. Walker's having a good month. And McCutcheon down on strike. Chased Pirates again. Gone in order. One, two, three, go the Buckos. Rockies come to the plate in the bottom of the first.
score. Bottom of the first inning. It's a new addition to the ballpark this year. We'll get to later. Take a look at the lineup for the Rockies brought to you by Honda. Charlie Blackman and Josh Rutledge. Corey Dickerson hits third. Carlos Gonzalez in the cleanup spot. Then Arenado and Ben Paulson. Five hits and 11 at bats since his major league debut. He'd been playing behind uh, Todd Helton for a number of years. So just called up for AAA. William Rosario, DJ LeMahieu, and then Brett Anderson will bat last against right-hander Charlie Morton. Take a look at Charlie's numbers on the year. The ERA is in very good uh, shape. He'd have a few more wins, except early in the season, uh, he was really snake bit by a lot of unearned runs that cost him some uh, decisions. Now Charlie will face another Charlie, Charlie Blackman. Curveball of Charlie's has really come along nicely this season. Is a got to where he's throwing a few more of those, and maybe not quite as many uh, two seam fastballs as in the past. One strike to Blackman, and the pitch. And he's inside it low. One ball and one strike. Blackman begins the night hitting just over 300. 304, 14 homers, and 53 runs batted in. In the air to right field. That's playable for Polanco. We'll make the catch, and there's one out. Tonight's Rivers Casino tips to win. What do you have, Bob? Well, the first ones don't take uh, this walkie lineup lightly. They're missing uh, some uh, big pieces to it. Uh, they didn't do a whole lot of hitting at, uh, at PNC Park, but still in this ballpark, uh, if you you know don't really bear down, they're going to put up some runs off you. And uh, as always, Morton, it's important, especially here at Coors Field, keep the ball on the ground. And the other last one there, win the first one, just kind of referring to, I think this is an important road trip. It's a long one. It's going to the West Coast. Uh, you're getting into the, the real pennant drive now. And... Uh, it would be nice to take this first win, get off on a good uh, first step on this long road trip. And against the West, the Pirates five and one in their current string, but this year fourteen and five against the National League West. That's the highest winning percentage against any single division this year by any team in baseball. So they hopefully they can keep that up. They have. Won a series against each of the teams they'll be playing with a it sweep always, over the Rockies. Always seem to play real well in uh, in Phoenix uh, over the last few years, and that's where four of our games are going to be. One, two, and Rutledge down on strikes, and they're two away for Colorado against Arizona. I guess I should say uh, yeah. against Phoenix. It's okay. We will be in Phoenix. That curveball I was talking about has uh, really become a great pitch for Charlie. It's made his reliance on the sinker and the ground ball a little less. It, uh, two things. He gets more strikeouts, less balls get put in play, and it's been a nice uh, weapon against left-hand hitters. Two lefties used to, I'm sorry, lefties just give him so much trouble. Corey Dickerson, ground ball to Mercer. Goes to first and gets him. First ground ball out for ground Chuck. And the Rockies are gone in order. We go to the second in Denver.
Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Let's go box. Gabby Sanchez leading off against Brett Anderson to start the second inning. And a pitch in for a strike to Gabby. Gabby making a start against the lefty. The Pirates have seen a lot of lefties lately, so four in a row with three straight against Colorado, and then another with the Dodgers. And Gabby hits one to center field right at Charlie Blackman, and there's one out. One gone. There's Neil Walker. He has reached base safely in 21 straight games. That's the longest active streak in Major League Baseball. Having a great year, and, and one of the reasons, not all of it by any means, but one of the reasons is that uh, he's, he's really upped his game against left-handed pitching this season. Last year, it really got to be a problem for him. There was talk that he might, not by Neil, but there was some talk that maybe he should give up a switch hitting. He put forth uh, an effort to uh, clean things up, and it's worked out great. You saw that 292 hitting right-handed. The average is uh, just fine. He's still uh, he's got a, a little more power from that left side. Drives the ball to the outfield more from the left side. Has a tendency to hit a few more ground balls as a right-handed hitter. Down to third. Arenado scoops it up. And there are two out. Nolan Arenado a good glove down there at third base, and he'll be an anchor for this Rockies infield for some time to come, you'd expect. Two men out. First five men in a row set down by Brett Anderson. Skipper Walt Weiss, who had been coaching junior varsity football at a nearby high school before being named manager of the Rockies. Quinn Hurdle telling the story again today to the Colorado press about how when he was the manager here. They had basically offered any available coaching job to Walt. And uh, he turned them all down. He wanted to be home with his kids and coach his kids. And then when the time was right, the manager's job came open. The Rockies hired him. He was around as a part time coach for home games. Russell Martin with a 1 2 count, two down, base is empty. And time is called. Chris Guccione, the home plate umpire. Two to Russ. Tom Hallion, the crew chief, he's at second. Which means we'll see Tom behind the plate on Sunday. Full count to Russell Martin, three and two. Now Russell's doing a nice job laying off those balls down out of the strike zone. That's what got McCutcheon. He struck him out in that first inning. Swung a fastball down and uh, and then swung at that breaking ball in the dirt. That's exactly what Russell Martin just didn't do. He took the fastball down and then not going after that hook. First base runner of the ball game belongs to the Pirates. And it's via base on balls from Brett Anderson. A good discipline at bat by uh, Russell. Russell stole his 90th career base this season. Also hit his 110th career home run and his 500th RBI also came this season. Jordy Mercer now batting, hitting in the seventh spot tonight, 248 average. Brent Morell on deck. And a strike to Jordy. Runner on, two outs for Mercer. One of 
one. Mercer's gone hitless in his last nine at bats. Prior to that, he had a stretch when he went five for 13. Two strikes on Jordy. 19 games this month, hitting 328. And against the Rockies last weekend, he had four hits and 11 at bats. I'm better and better every month. Each month he's been set improved. the bar a little low early on. Yeah, so <laughs> April was so bad, May was great. And then June even better. Popped up. Shallow right center. Coming on to get it is Gonzalez. And the Pirates are done in the second inning. They leave a man after an inning and a half, still scoreless. For baseball between the Pirates and the Rockies. I'm Robbie and Smikowski. Charlie Morton been on a pretty good run lately for the Buckos on the mound, but the one thing that has plagued him has been the long ball. And I asked his pitching coach, Ray Searage, what uh, he, uh, what he, uh, why that's happening. Well, the decision making has got to be better on his part. And um, there's been situations where, you know, the, the pitch that he's thrown plays right into a, the, the hitter at that point in time. So what we have to do is try to stay away from that strength at that point in time. Go for the kill, but uh, possibly execute a lot better. Now I'm not eating my words anymore, Tim and Bob. So very honest stuff there from Ray Searage with regard to Charlie Morton and uh, maybe being on the same page with the catchers and maybe just putting the right pitches in there at the right time. Right, Bob? I mean, that's what uh, it is a lot of time. I know that the last home he, home run he gave up was, uh, you know, kind of the uh, the wrong pitch at the wrong time for sure. He had uh, given up a leadoff double. The left-hand hitter, Gonzalez, trying to pull the ball, and he threw him something slow for a strike down and in. The last thing he wanted to, to allow him to hit, and he hit it out of the ballpark. Not only pulled it and got the runner over, he got him all the way in with one swing. So a lot of times it is... Uh, Trying to, uh, you know, look and see, and, and you know by the scoreboard what the situation is, what that hitter's trying to do, and you got to throw something that is going to at least make an attempt to prevent that. And in that particular instance, that was not the case. Slow down and in is not going to uh, make him hit it the other way. Inside corner for a strike. Two balls and two strikes to Gonzalez. Teams are going to continue to shift and leave half the field open until hitters take their base hit. And Gonzalez fouls this one off the mask of Russell Martin. So Adrian Gonzalez trying to 
do that in the last series with the Dodgers. Tried to bunt one down the third base side and walked to first, but he bunted it foul. It depends on the game situation. If it's uh, early in the game, nobody out, most definitely you can take a chance. And Gonzalez down on strikes, ball in the dirt. Strikeout completed 2 3. Take a chance of trying to lay down that bunt and, and get an inning started if you're a you know, guy uh, that's got power, then you don't want to be trying to bunt if there's two outs. A good curveball. That's the strikeout pitch from Charlie now. That's just a hammer curve, isn't it? It's a beauty. And he holds the ball in that split change grip, and then he'll change it in the glove depending on what the pitch is. Nolan Arenado, the third baseman. Takes ball one. This guy has earned his way with the Rockies organization. They like him a lot. And we'll take a pitch for the ball, 2 0. It's 37 games, though, this year. It was on the disabled list and came back on the 3rd of July. The game against the Dodgers. A hot shot right at Walker. Two down. You know you're going to get an awful lot of action when you're in the infield. You're going to like coming to the ballpark as an infielder, knowing Charlie's on the mound. You're going to be working hard. You got to be ready on every pitch. Sinking fastball to Samer. Now Charlie will face Ben Paulson. Paulson had been in Triple A in Colorado Springs for a while and been hoping for an opportunity with the Rockies, but Todd Helton continued to play on, and there was no room at the end at first base for Paulson. And then in the offseason, Rockies went and signed Justin Morno. So again, no room. Morno on the disabled list, and Paulson up. Takes a strike. Paulson's dad, Tom Reginas, is the head baseball coach at Winthrop in his third season there. Actually, when Paulson was at Clemson, his dad was the hitting coach there. Paulson with a one ball, two strike count. There's Justin on the disabled list. Couldn't play against the Pirates last weekend, had a sore neck. And Rockies just decided to get him some rest. Hopefully that thing gets fixed. So he's had a recurring issue since spring training. 2 2 pitch to Paulson. Short swing beyond the Pirate dugout. The last two fastballs that Charlie's tried to throw him inside, start him in there, and then have him tail back to catch that inside corner. Just missed on the one before that. It was a little up and in. That's at number four. Try to do it again. Paul's in a little emergency swing. Try to stay alive. Charlie's 2 2. That was close on the inside. Again, that's three in a row. He's tried to throw in that same spot, use the movement, come back and get a, a, a called strike three. Started inside. You can see it working back. It just didn't come far enough. And that's outside ball four. Paulson has worked a walk, and the Rockies have their first base runner. They took three shots at that fastball and then tried to backdoor the curveball. It stayed uh, out on the porch, couldn't get in. Door was locked. Yep. Screen door. Screen door. It's probably just one of those hooks. Yeah. It goes Could've through just... an eye. A little screwdriver in there or something, flipped it up. Well, Lean Rosario now batting with two outs and one on. Catcher hitting 238 hits a high bouncer to Morrell who had to fight off the lights. He throws on to first, and the inning is over. First time in the last nine games, they, neither team has had a hit for the first two innings here.
Brent Morell is getting set to lead things off here for the Buccos in the third inning. And he grew up in Bakersfield, California, so it would make total sense that he's a Steelers fan, right? Well, he is. His father, Rick, was a longtime football coach at Foothill High School, and he was Joey, uh, Joey Porter's defensive coordinator when he played there. Now, Brent was the ball boy for those teams and developed a friendship with Porter since he was a young kid. And the whole Morrell family followed Joey's career through Colorado State and into Pittsburgh, and that's how they became huge Steelers fans. Brent told me it's a really cool feeling playing baseball games just a few hundred yards from where Joey became a star linebacker in the NFL, and he actually sent out a tweet saying just 43 days left. 43 days left until the first Steeler game. So Brent Morrell fired up about playing with the Pirates, but also about being so close to his favorite team as a kid. Yes, yeah, he's probably excited. They reported to training camp today, first day of practice. One for two with the Buccos this year. Had been hitting cleanup in Indy. He takes outside and then low, and it's two and one. And the pitch. Bouncer to third. Arenado on the short hop. Throws him out. One gone. Anderson getting some ground ball outs. He's got four of them so far. And he'll face Charlie. Anderson works quickly. Likes to get the ball and throw it. Strike one to Morton. Here's the 0 1 pitch. And it's 0 and 2. I think Anderson fell the ball just a little bit harder than he did at our, our park. Some, uh, some 90, 92s. And they bounce her down to third base. And Arenado's been busy. And they're now two out. So, Pirates fans, it's that time again. We want to see how you root for the Bucks. Be our AT&T fan photo of the day. Show us the most unique ways you raise the Jolly Roger. The fun places you watch the games on Root Sports or how you display your Pirate pride. Submit a picture via Twitter using the hashtag BucksFanPhoto. And we'll show them. During our telecast tonight. And no matter where you go, you see Pittsburgh fans. Even Bakersfield. Even Bakersfield. Gregory Polanco is 0 for 1. Shows Bunt takes a strike. And normally, if you meet somebody somewhere in the world, they're a Pittsburgh football fan. A baseball fan and a hockey fan as well. You ever uh, you know, wait for somebody to get off an airplane and uh, you know, it's coming from Pittsburgh and you know you, you're there early and there's planes coming from other places and then when the Pittsburgh plane arrives, you notice half the people are wearing black and gold. Uh huh. It's uh, uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, folks, uh, they travel with their colors yeah. for sure. I mean, it's a, it's always amazing. I, I, every time in spring training, you know, you go to over to the the airport in Tampa. You know, the, the flights coming in from Philadelphia or wherever, you don't see any colors. The flight coming in from Pittsburgh, everybody's got black and gold on. Blackman puts it away, and the Pirates gone in order in the third. Two and a half gone by, no score.
Football on Route Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Equinox and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks. No score. Not much of anything so far through the first two and a half innings. And pitch to LeMay here, the second baseman. Ball one. Sterling Marte on the trip. He is on the seven day disabled list. After being. This one's down to the right field corner. That's going to be a fair ball and bounce off the wall. Polanco's going to have to chase it. LeMahieu will head to third. And DJ LeMahieu is in with a triple. Now that's one of the. Uh, Learning process things that Polanco's going through and learning all these different stadiums, places he's never played a baseball game in. I'm sure he was out there you know, during batting practice trying to uh, watch all the different uh, angles and, and that sort of thing. But he got caught a little too close to the wall and it bounced right by him. Well, that's what I mean. You could see him watching it as soon as he saw it get by him. You know, he had three. Third triple of the season for LeMahieu. Infield is in, and the batter is Anderson. A swing and a miss. And now's when Charlie needs to go to work on him and maybe see some of those real good curveballs, get that strikeout. Clint was talking about how this ballpark plays is down the lines. He said sometimes you will see balls you think that are going to drift foul that stay fair here, and they surprise you. And that one had a lot of spin on it. it was Slicing away, but it stayed fair. There's just a lot of room in that right field corner. It goes down to 350. Well, there's a lot of room in between the uh, the chalk line and the stands. Most places that would have bounced into the stands. Anderson a ground ball to first. Lemayhu will stay at third base as Sanchez tags out Anderson, and there is now one out. Fans, Pirates games are more fun in groups. Ask about how each member of your group can take home a Pirates cap or have a hot dog and drink credit loaded right onto your ticket. Give your group a night to remember. Book your group outing by calling 1 800 buy box or go to pirates.com slash groups. Looks like there's some groups here. Back to the top of the order for Colorado, Charlie Blackman. One out runner at third LeMay who will lead off triple. Blackman swing and a miss. Blackman 0 for 1 he fly to Polanco in right field. In the first inning. And the pitch. Ground ball wide of first base for strike two. And he's got ahead of him now uh, with you know, a couple of uh, sinkers. He needs to try for that strikeout, just like I said uh, you know, when Anderson, the pitcher, was up there. Well, now you have a, a regular hitter, a 300 hitter, but still he's deep in the count, 0 and 2. You got to make a good pitch, a couple of them. Try to get him to chase something down out of the strike zone. Something he can't really hit, which is probably going to mean that curveball, but don't throw it for a strike. Just wants him to bounce it. That was the uh, splitter pitch. Taken by Blackman for a ball one and two. Ray doesn't look too nervous. Okay, fastball in. Perfect. Absolutely what he wanted to do with that pitch. Snatches it back. He didn't get a call, but he, I mean, he put it right where he wanted to. Wants the ball to feed back to the inside corner and get a called strike three. It was almost there. And two and two to Blackman. With LeMahieu at third base and the Pirate infield in. Yanks foul. Blackman was a reserve outfielder. Or the National League in the All-Star game in Minnesota played center field. 
Went 0 for 2 at the plate during the All-Star game. We look at Coors Field. 347 down the left field line, and it's even deeper in right. 350, and then you got to hit it up over a scoreboard. Got him. Terrific pitch by Charlie Morton. And there are now two out. He certainly made the pitches that he had to. And once he got ahead, then he went to work on him. Nice. Tries to bring it in over the outside part of the plate. Beautifully done. So now he's going to get Josh Rutledge. Rutledge struck out in the first inning. He's 0 for 1. Infield gets to move back with two down. First pitch is low ball one. And earlier we were talking with Charlie in the home runs and, and uh, you know, needing to know what the situation is, what the game calls for, what the hitters are trying to do. Well, that's exactly what he, he did that at bat. You know that, uh, you know, the hitters just trying to get the ball put in play when we've got the infield in. Wants to get something to the outfield. Get that runner home. Only one out. Two balls and no strikes to Rutledge. And Charlie needed him to, to make it out without putting that ball in play. Needed that strikeout. And he went and got it. Two and one. And the next thing that you got to remember, too, when you're out there is when you have a situation like this, you got that big strikeout. And you can't take a, a deep breath now and think you're out of the woods. You, know, you got the to two outs, you just got one left, but you got to really stay focused and bear down. The line drive to the gap in right center field. One nothing Colorado. Rutledge heading for second base. And he will stop there with two down. Boy, really a nice, uh, nice pitch, and uh, Rutledge just, you know, beat him with a good job of hitting. This ball is not in a bad spot. It's a, in the strike zone. It's down and away. Look at that. I mean, that's just a good, good job of hitting when you can hit that to the opposite gap for a double. You got to just tip your hat to him. That was not a case of, uh, you know, Charlie at, you know, losing focus or anything after that big strikeout. That was just good hitting by Rutledge. Well, we asked if this would be another comeback win for the Pirates. They've got to come back now. Down one nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, they had to score one anyway. They had to get one. So, two out double for Rutledge. Scoring LeMahieu in the pitch inside to Corey Dickerson. Situation a couple of games ago against Washington with... Dickerson at the plate and Rutledge at second base. Rutledge hit one off the center field wall. Uh, Dickerson hit one off the center field wall. And Rutledge didn't score. Stopped the third. Thought the ball was uh, going to be caught, but the center fielder for the Nationals was nowhere to be found. How many outs were there? I believe there was less than two. No, there was. Well, I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Outs on depending if that's a good right. player or not. Right. If there's nobody out, then he did what he was supposed to do. If there was one out, then that was very foolish. Yeah. But at this ballpark, too, 415 to center. Long way away. Cost him a run. They've left a lot of base runners on with scoring, uh, men in scoring position. Fly ball left field. Harrison drifting, still drifting. He makes the catch. So one run comes in on two extra base hits. There is a man left, and after three full. The Rockies have gotten on the board. It's one nothing, Colorado.
delve into the team's rich history to see the best of your Buccos. On the next edition, count down the Pirates' most memorable catches, including unbelievable performances from Niger Morgan, Bill Verdon, and Brian Giles. See the full list on Inside Pirates Baseball, 10 great Pirates catches tomorrow at 7 on Root Sports. That would be a good one. one nothing. Rockies in front, top of the fourth inning. Pirates trying to get something going. They're just watching a couple of those uh, catches there. It really makes you want to tune in and yeah. check that out. Uh, Giles' catch they showed is just yeah. still incredible. Here is the pitch to Josh Harrison. He made a few great catches himself this season. Harrison's 0 for 1. He grounded out to LeMahieu in the first inning. Josh in left field tonight. Lots of room to cover in this outfield. Big outfield, a lot of real estate. Oh, two pitch pulled foul. It's into the camera wall beyond the Pirates dugout. Jay Hay hangs alive. Dan made a nice play. Thank you, Dan. That's up high. And the count one and two to Harrison. One ball and two strikes. Outside, two and two. And the Cubs. Got a home run from Luis Valbuena late in the ball game. They beat the Cardinals today, seven to six. As Harrison hits this one out of play down the right side. Word is the Cardinals are looking for a catcher and possibly talking to AJ Prezinski, who was let go by the Red Sox. He's been out there a while. Yeah, that was a, when we were in St. Louis. They were talking about mm -hmm. Prezinski. They uh, at that point. They came out publicly saying that there was no interest. Yeah. Maybe they've changed their mind. Okay. Kurt Suzuki might be another option. So they're looking to get some help with Yadier Molina out for an extended period of time. Just showing how valuable he is to that ball club. 2 2 hammered to left field down the line. The ball hooking. Foul. Had the distance, carried well, but just hooked in front of the foul pole. That one didn't stay fair. It did not. Now, Jay thought it definitely had a, had a chance. He didn't stay there and look at it. He took off and started running. Yep. Uh, hooked about, what do you think, about four or five feet foul. Yeah. And Jay Hayes thinking that that's got a chance to stay in. And this one up in the air to right center field. Gonzalez will make the catch. And there's one out for the Pirates in the top half of the fourth. I think we saw Jay Hay, I forget uh, exactly which game it was, but he hit a foul ball that went out. The next pitch, he hit one fair that went out. Up and in. That was at uh, Dodger Stadium. Oh, Dodger Stadium? Yeah, back in um, late May. Wasn't that an up and in pitch? That was, that was the home run I'm thinking of. Then. Oh, I know which one I'm thinking of. Remember when he was going to sacrifice Bunt? That was another thing. And yeah. they, they, he tried it twice. His pinch hitting, in fact. His pinch hitting. Couldn't, get the, couldn't, get, it down, couldn't down. get it down. And then he hit a up and in fastball out of the ballpark for a home run. Couldn't get the bunt down. Yeah. I'd take that instead yeah. of sacrifice. Oh, yeah. yeah, that'll work. It still moves the runner over. It, yeah, <laughs> and yourself, too. <laughs> Scores them both. 1-1 one, one pitch to Kutch. One and two. Boy, Kutcher's really uh, not being very selective tonight, is he? He's swung at a lot of pitches already that are uh, borderline at best. Some of them uh, really way out of the strike zone. One, two coming to McCutcheon. There's a 92 again. Anderson certainly. It was a better fastball than uh, what we saw in PNC Park. Looks like that, from what I remember, was he throwing that hard? There's a lot of curveballs. 
Not even two and two. And it didn't seem to have a good fastball last Saturday. Didn't seem to bother him. But no, no, just kept throwing those breaking balls in there. And that one is pulled on top of the pirate dugout. And a McCutcheon fan almost got it. That was a pirate fan who got it anyway. <laughs> well, two balls, two strikes to Andrew. Ground ball wide of third. Andrew is such a natural athlete. I don't know if you saw him swing a golf club yesterday, but he hardly plays golf, if ever. And got to the tee box on a par three and hit it directly at the flag. His first swing. He does a little of, uh, of everything. He's very well rounded. He, he can draw. He's uh, musically talented and plays an instrument. Sitting on the piano. And he can hit. I think hitting is probably his best. I think so. So I enjoy watching him do the most. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that he can uh, hit a golf ball long ways. I imagine he can generate a lot of club head speed. Now both Josh Harrison and Andrew McCutcheon working the pitch count of Brett Anderson a bit. Jay had a nine pitch at bat. This is the ninth pitch to McCutcheon and a ground ball to short. Rutledge quick release in the dirt scooped up by Paulson. Two men gone for the Bucks in the fourth. It's kind of what we saw from Anderson though. He just started getting guys out one after the other. And it wasn't until the Pirates got until the Rockies bullpen that they started doing some damage. And the bullpen was certainly the weak spot. All three games. And Sanchez looks at a slow pitch for a strike. Like uh, all three games, uh, it was a reliever that got a win for us. It was indeed. Gabby will probably be seeing a lot of uh, playing time starting out on this trip. A lot of left handed pitching. Well, that's the rooftop. That's a new addition this year. And the Rockies broadcasters, Drew Goodman with the umbrella over him, George Frazier uncovered. A little rain on him tonight. Just a little late. They get hazard pay for that? It'll be snow up that high, isn't it? That snow pack up there he might There's a chopper to third base and Arenado needs to throw to first and the Pirates have gone down in order for the third time in four innings.
Paul, as you saw a couple moments ago with George Frazier and Drew Goodman calling the game right here from the brand new rooftop. And I'm standing where they used to be. They have now made their way back to their normal spot in the dugout in the booth next to you, Tim and Bob. The rain was kind of giving them a little bit of a hard time making a mess of their notes. So the crew right now is cleaning everything up. But how about this new area added in the off season? 38,000 square feet of area for fans to watch games. It's a general admission ticket to come in. It's first come, first serve, and a fantastic area to watch the game. There are a burger joint, two premium restaurants, a casual sports bar downstairs with a lot of TVs to watch it. It is a fantastic place to watch it. So any Pirate fans thinking about making your way on a ballpark tour and you come out west, be sure to come up here. It's inexpensive, uh, very affordable, and a great spot. you got a great view of the field, and uh, who knows, a lot of good... Uh, Good vibe going on around here. Fans having a good time, and uh, I might hang up here for a couple more innings, okay? Yeah. Look at the view. Man, yeah, we might awesome. not see Robbie for a while. I think he's going to hang out up there. I think they got a nice pregame happy hour out there, They too. do. They have a it actually, happy it op- two hours. It opens three hours before game time, and they have food and drink specials. How about that? We'll see you later, Robbie. Nice place. Nice seeing you today. Could have got a little <laughs> more creative with the name. <laughs> Down the left field side. This one's twisting toward the seats. No. You know, into the seats. You know what I mean with the name? I know. How about the uh, the summit, the Timberline, the Continental Divide? You know, it's up at the very top. It's the, here at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. The yeah. rooftop sounds like we're in Queens. It's a long way from the rooftop to the broadcast booth next door to us. So uh, it's a it's a challenge they're dealing with at this point in time. Foul ball caught by Mercer, and Gonzalez is out. To start at the bottom of the fourth. So, Jeff Houston, former infielder, and does a lot of the games as a color analyst, is up there flying solo until Drew and George get back in there. Coming down from the summit. And the pitch is in for a strike to Arenado. You know, the there's a misconception that they actually shrunk the capacity of the ballpark to build the rooftop. They did take seats out, but they still sell the same number of seats as standing room. Charlie bobbles it and still manages to retire Arenado. Way to stay with it, Charlie. I don't know if Arenado was running hard on that. I, I hear some boos. I'm not sure if they're for the umpire or for Arenado. I think the way that Arenado reacted to, he realized perhaps he didn't run as hard as he could. Yep. Uh, you know, I, it wasn't exactly walking. I, when you hit a tapper back to the mound like that, not too many people are going to run a four flat to first. So I think he was he was going down the line about as fast as you can expect anybody to on a little check swing right back to the mound. Ben Paulson was the first Rockies base runner. He drew a walk his first time up, takes a strike. Realistically, a six month season, the everyday players, they are not going to go down the line like it's a. You know, getting in time at the combine or anything like that. I mean, they're, they hit a little routine ball back to the pitcher. They're just kind of firmly, you know, like a kind of a. a well, maybe an 80% run down the line. And that, and that, to be honest with you, is fine when you really think about it. They know most of the time if they got a chance for a hit, they smell something, though. They'll be moving. If it's a double play attempt, something like that. No balls and two strikes to the first baseman, Ben Paulson. Two men out. Trying to throw one up and in. Well, one he's ball, been two strikes. To nail that pitch a lot tonight. That fastball to the left-hand hitters, kind of up on their hands and letting it work back. It just doesn't quite come back for yeah, him. It far doesn't enough. have that comeback that he normally gets. Doesn't have the comeback. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, the altitude. Now that's what they say that the ball doesn't move as much up here. Two and two the count. Moves okay. pretty good off the bat. I mean. and it's three and two. Charlie Morton trying to get Ben Paulson out. Head to the fifth inning. 
Byron is still looking for a hit. They've had one base runner. That was Russell Martin. He walked in the second inning. On the left field side, it slices into the seats. Paulson represented the Rockies Triple A club, the Colorado Springs Sky Sox, at the Triple A All Star game in Durham, North Carolina recently. Three two. And a hit. A touching over there to grab it. Paulson a big turnaround first base. Paulson is one for one. That's the third hit for the Rockies. Fans follow every Pirates game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv, game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit Pirates.com today. Lean Rosario, the catcher, takes ball one. Two thirty-seven, grounded out to third base. Brent Morrell threw him out to end the second inning. And that's knocked down by Sanchez, but it will not be a play. Base hit for Rosario. And now the Rockies with runners at first and second. Oh, just dribbled out. If he hadn't slowed it down quite that much, I might still have been able to have a play, but he's, he slowed it down so much that uh, it took a long time for Walker to get to the ball. Mayhew a bouncer to Walker. This is on the inning. No runs, two hits, two left. We go to the fifth. Pirates looking for a hit. On Route Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. And by Levin Mattress, located in all Levin furniture showrooms and freestanding stores. Let's go, Bucks! Charlie Morton's just given up the one run. He's been getting a number of ground ball outs, but the Pirates haven't helped him out offensively. Walt Weiss making a change defensively. As he has. Replaced Nolan Arenado at third base with Charlie Culberson. I wonder if uh, Weiss th saw that play differently than I did. <laughs> Maybe he didn't like the uh, effort that Arenado was giving uh, on the check swing comebacker to the mound. You know, Walker leading off. <laughs> he definitely wasn't going all out. 
So Walt Weiss apparently sitting him down. Walker base hit to right field. That's the first hit for the Pirates tonight. And Neil Walker has reached base now in 22 consecutive games. We'll be watching the rest of the game on comeback. Every runner, I want to see how many of them run all out down to first base. It'll look like Usain Bolt the rest of the night. Yeah. Rainbow over Coors Field. The sun has peeked through the clouds. Martin shows bunt, takes a strike. When that sun comes out at that time, that's very, very difficult for the first baseman here at this ballpark. Look at that picture. We need to build something over there now to block the sun. One one to Russ. Martin walked his first time up in the second inning. And the pitch to Martin from Brett Anderson. Up high for a ball. Martin is one of four catchers all time with at least 110 home runs, 500 RBIs, and 90 stolen bases over his career. Carlton Fisk, the leader in that category, Ivan Rodriguez, Benito Santiago, and Russell Martin, the top four on that list all time. Three and one. Pirates of the time run aboard. Neil Walker after his leadoff single. Nolan Arenado's got the sweatshirt on and oh well, he's hurt. Oh, he looks like he settled in for the night. And Russ draws another walk. And now the tying run moves into scoring position. Walker heads over to second base. Martin down to first. Yeah, got a bit of a call there, didn't he? Nobody out. First and second for the Pirates. A little bit going now with Jordy Mercer up next. Corner infielders are in for Mercer. Strike one to Jordy. See if Anderson hangs one to him in this at bat. So he hung that last one. He did. <laughs> Just going to finish the sentence so and say that, that he can take a swing at. Let's see if he hung, hangs another one. Mercer down to third base. Culberson to second. He's off the bag. Out at first. A double play. Would have been a triple play, but the throw was offline at second. And Walt Weiss is coming out. Yeah, I kind of thought he might uh, venture out there. A good effort, but the uh, the throw just a little on the wide side. And it certainly looked like the throw takes him off the bag. Oh, well, I don't know. Oh. That, that looks awfully close, sir. Huh? Uh, they're going to take a look at it. So they're going to look and see if his foot was on the back. They're not talking about the neighborhood play. The neighborhood play is not reviewable, not challengeable. But they're just going to see flat out his foot was on the bag or not. And if it is, it's a triple play and the inning is over. So far, we haven't seen anything that would uh, lead me to believe that they will reverse it. This will show right here. This is the view. Falls in the glove right now. Ooh. Is he touching the base, though? 
Hard to see if he's actually touching it there, but it looked like his foot was at least behind it. This might tell us something more, maybe. Maybe not. See how wide the throw is. Not that's not going to show us anything either. We would need a, a shot from first base over to second in order to tell for sure. Yeah, I. I, I think they're going to probably look at this uh, over and over again for a while. They're going to take their time. I don't, I, I don't think it'll be overturned. Eric Cooper. Well, what is the, the wording on the uh, on the sheet on the wall at home? Of clear and uh, clear and convincing. Clear and convincing evidence for an overturn. Uh, if the word is the play stands, they didn't have enough of an angle or a good enough shot to overturn it. But the Buccos had first and second, nobody out. And the Mercer ground ball down to Culberson. Nearly started a triple play. It wasn't called that way. Now that angle made me look made it look like maybe his toe was on the bag. See. On that back corner. Well, this is an angle that well, but you can't see it. That would be the shot you'd want, or at least from that side, but I don't know. Yeah, this one of those plays that now if he would have originally called him out and we were the ones challenging, I don't think it would, that would be overturned either. I think this is a a play that could go either direction. So I think they'll just allow the the play to go as it was a called on the field. Well, they are taking their time. Yep. New York's taking a good long look at this one. It's time to see Russell Martin standing at second base. He would be the tying run if this call stands. I guess if you want Weiss, it's certainly a call worth challenging. Like there's some communication, and now we'll find out. Let it stand. The, the call stands. That's the word from New York. So, not clear and convincing evidence to overturn the call. And Walt Weiss loses his challenge for the remainder of the game. Mercer hits into a five unassisted to six to three double play. And Russell Martin is alone on the bags now at second base. Brent Morrell a chance to get him in, but they'll not give him a chance. He'll walk and they'll pitch to Charlie Morton instead. Incidentally, the last triple play against the Pirates I have to go back to 1992. September 20th, Mickey Moore and Dini was unassisted against Jeff King. Pirates last turned one in April of 2009 in Cincinnati against the Reds. Well, Morrell intentionally walked. And Charlie Morton a chance to help his own cause. Charlie with two hits and 33 at bats. Set to go after getting the sign from Rosario, the pitch. And ground ball right side, LeMayhew there. And that is that. Pirates will leave two. They get one hit. Go to the bottom of the fifth when we come back.
property of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Here's our day on the boat of this day in Pirates history. 1972, Danny Murtaugh came out of retirement to manage the National League squad to a 4-3 win in the All-Star game. Five Pirates were on that team. Steve Blass pitched an inning in relief of Bob Gibson. Willie Stargell started in left field. Manny Sanguin and Al Oliver each came off the bench. Roberto Clemente was voted to start but didn't play due to injury. Joe Morgan drove in the game, winning run in the 10th with a single off Dave McNally. Charlie Morton was hoping for a base hit, couldn't come up with one. He's 0 for 2, and now we start the bottom of the fifth inning with Brett Anderson, the pitcher leading off against Charlie, and a 1 nothing Rockies lead. Lead off triple in the third inning by DJ LeMayhew. He was driven in on a two out double by Josh Rutledge. That's the only score of the ballgame. Pirates with one hit. Neil Walker talking to Tom Hallion out at second base. And the ground ball right to Walker. So he's going to stop his conversation, make the play. And there's one pitch and one out. Got to be ready all the time. All the time. I wonder if he excused himself. Say, excuse me, I have to go get a ground ball now. <laughs> Does pitching it more of a home run friendly park affect a pitcher's pitch selection? Well, if you're later in a ball game and uh, it's a close game, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be worried about and concerned about a home run long ball. But for a starting pitcher in the early part of a ball game, maybe if there's a whole bunch of people on base, you know, you, home run's gonna put up that big crooked number. But if it's just gonna be a solo shot, no, you're not you're not gonna change that much. You, you know, the worst thing you can do is, is, I think, is start worrying about the long balls and then you start nitpicking a little bit. And before you know it, you've walked two guys and now somebody hits a home run, it's three instead of one. So, pitch your game. You know, if you get later and the home run uh, looks like it might be a, uh, you know, something that could win for them, that's when you have to change. I think it applies mainly more to the, the relievers that are coming in in the, in the last three innings in the starter. 2-1. Blackman pulls this one down the right field side. It hooks into the seats foul for a strike two and two. Any park affect the way you pitch at certain times? In your They're just regularly. If the wind's blowing in, you can challenge uh, yeah. challenge the center part of the strikeout, or excuse me, the strike zone more than uh, more than somewhere else. But ground ball to second. I never got the pitch here. I pitched at Mile High Stadium, uh, and I don't recall changing anything. I only think I pitched there once. That was pre-Humidor, also, of course. So when Coors Field opened, it was pre-Humidor, and they say it's kind of leveled things out a little bit. But the only thing I really remember about Mile High was the horse on the at the end zone. Yeah, that would have been out in right field. Yeah, <laughs> that big white horse, the big Bronco. <laughs> They still have that over there? Not over there, no. But they do have one out by the airport now. But they do not have one there anymore. That's all gone. They used to have McNichols Arena right next to it. And, uh, and both McNichols Arena and Mile High Stadium are gone. Another strike delivered to Josh Rutledge. Rutledge with the lone RBI in the game. Third inning double. Eight ground outs. So he's been able to do. Yep, using some gravity here. Up in the air to left field. Come on, gravity. And looking up into the raindrops. <laughs> Bring that one down quick. Gravity brought it into the glove of Josh Harrison. Still one nothing. We're heading to the sixth in Denver.
see what National League All-Star pitchers are saying about facing Andrew McCutcheon at the plate. Explore first-round pick Cole Tucker's MLB pedigree and a lot more. It's Inside Pirates Baseball presented by Allegheny Health Network tomorrow after postgame on Root Sports. First-round pick Cole Tucker. Arizona. Here we are back at Coors Field with Bob Walk. I'm Tim Never. Robbie and Smikowski also. Top of the order up. Gregory Polanco takes a breaking ball for a strike. Polanco is 0 for 2. Grounded out in the first. Line to center in the third. And this has been one of the weak spots that we've seen from Polanco. The hitting against the left-handed pitchers. Pitch outside. He went after it. He has uh, had a tough time with it. Nothing and to the count. Rosario had set up outside. They were hoping they could get Polanco to chase. So a waste pitch, one and two. Pitch for Manders. Again. Breaking ball that time. They're just off the plate. And, and I mean, that's what you like to see from Polanco. He's able to, to recognize that pitch early enough to not chase with two strikes. Piece of that one. That one was close enough that he thought he should probably at least to see if he could get a piece of it, if nothing else, and he did. Two and two to Gregory. Sit safely in back to back games. Three for eight with a home run, four runs, and three runs batted in coming into this one tonight. Takes a fastball up and the count full three and two. One nothing Colorado. Pirates trying to get that tying run on over and in. Chance to pick up a little ground tonight as St. Louis lost earlier today. Down at first base. Paulson will take it himself and there's one out. Oh for three for Gregory. He's not getting very many uh, hits off Anderson. Just one so far. That, that's really something that uh, he's been doing uh, you know, quite a bit since he's been back. He's giving up more hits than innings pitched. But he's a. Uh, Trying to fix that stat uh, tonight. Uh, Harrison to deep right center field. It carries a leaping catch by Blackman. Blackman said he called him off, said, I got it maybe a little sooner than he should have. Kind of a tough sky. Yeah, looking up into those uh, clouds, it hasn't gotten dark. Well, he had to make a. Uh, Course correction there right at the end. Corral that one. <laughs> Checking the win. <laughs> My country pulls this one foul. That yeah, was the win. That yeah, must have been. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's going to take out some sort of device from his yeah. back pocket. Well, it's just like it's like when someone boots a ground ball. They would look at the glove, take it off. Look at the glove. Glove had something to do with it. And the outfielders up. Throw some grass up. Yeah, look. Wind got it. One one to catch. Let it go. Yeah, that one was right there too. He'd been swinging at a lot of uh, poor pitches that are borderline or even worse out of the zone. That one he took right down the middle. Two balls, two strikes. That one uh, in the dirt. This is the third start for Anderson since he returned to the starting rotation, missing 81 games due to a broken left index finger. He suffered while batting against the Giants. Did this game seem a lot like the ones that were in the uh, Park. Base hit. Yes. There's a base hit for McCutcheon. 
Yeah, I really expected a little different type of uh, baseball in this series than what we had in Pittsburgh. Got that ball. Uh, inside uh, half of the plate right there at the knees. Just hit hard through the gap. Shortstop third base gap. Breaking ball in for a strike. Gabby tonight hitting the cleanup spot. He's 0 for 2. Flying to center field in the second inning and then grounded out to third in the fourth. Cutching at first base. And Gabby hits one to left field. On the run is Dickinson. And Corey Dickerson with a leaping catch. Still 1 0 Colorado. Images from the Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl from Coors Field in Denver with Bob Walk. I'm Tim Neffert. One nothing. The Rockies with the lead. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Corey Dickerson, the man who made the last out defensively. A leaping catch down the left field line. Will face Charlie Morton. Jeff Locke against Tyler Matzik. That's the matchup tomorrow. On a little bit earlier tomorrow, first pitch scheduled for 8:10 Eastern Time. Edinson Volquez will go Sunday against a starter that the Rockies have yet to announce. Oh, one pitch, one ball and one strike. Still raining. Yeah, it's been a little sprinkle off and on here for the last couple of days. Every time a cloud comes over, it does a little, little sprinkling of the infield. The breaking ball, cut on and missed, and it's one and two. You lived here a long time, you know the drill. Yeah, you just wait. Five minutes, it'll change. Yep. Summertime, afternoon showers, thunderstorms, and a lot of other places you'd say, oh boy, see if it's going to ruin my plans, but it just doesn't. It's, it's sort of like Florida in, in that way. The center field, McCutcheon will wait. And he makes the catch for the out. 
Corey Dickerson's out. One gone for the Rockies in the sixth inning. Do get a lot of lightning up here, though, in the summertime. Real nice ballpark here. The Lodo section, lower downtown section of Denver. A lot of purple. Gonzalez is swinging a miss. Split finger pitch. He's kind of down and away. There's kind of been a couple of those, perhaps today, go the other direction, kind of fool us on what they what they've been. There's two in a row. That's the pitch. Unless, unless he's throwing a slider again. Uh, he starts again, as we pointed out earlier, with that split grip. That's three in a row. And when you see Russell put down a three, that's that uh, split pitch. The fork ball, the change up, whatever you want to call it. That one right there. Trying to get that fastball to run back in. He just hasn't had that run. It still serves a purpose, though. I still like the fact that it goes in on those lefties. Even if they, uh, they they take it, gives them a different look. And you don't know it. Inning or so later, you might start hitting that inside corner with it. And they're used to taking it. And then maybe you start getting some of those strike three calls on that pitch. And then that's they'll be yelling at the umpire, walking back to the dugout. So it was a fun to watch when you're on the mound. Drive the hitter nuts. Oh, you, you, you love that. Here comes a breaking ball. Remember a Snidely Whiplash's dog? Yeah. And he used to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> you got that cheesy yeah, laugh. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're doing on the mound. <laughs> you're walking back. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> well, you used to have the same mustache as Snidely Whiplash yeah, and yeah, his dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. Culberson on deck. Here's the 3 2. In the air to center field, playable for McCutcheon. And that ball caught. Four out number two in the Rockies' sixth. The fans, you can take advantage of the Coca Cola Fan Pack. It's available every Sunday home game starting at $35 in advance. Receive a lower outfield box ticket, a fountain drink, a hot dog, and a soft pretzel. Get your tickets at the PNC Park ticket windows or visit pirates.com slash. Fan pack. Ice cream on a night like tonight would be nice. Ice cream is always nice. Not a bad night for ice cream. No. It's a long way to go here to get it though. Of course, only frozen yogurt. That's what we meant. Yeah. No ice cream, frozen yogurt. And I bounce it to short. One, two, three, go the Rockies in the sixth inning. Getting to winning number seven in the Mile High City.
One nothing Rockies top of the seventh inning off the bat from the MLB fan cave takes the love of the game to the next level going behind the scenes with the biggest stars in baseball and pop culture Tuesday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern time on MTV 2. Beautiful. You know, Walker fouls this one back. You can uh, look at that that view from up there. You understand uh, why it's such a popular area now here at Coors Field. And years and years ago, before this ballpark was built, this was nothing but warehouses, and it was an area where people didn't want to go. And there's a total urban renewal in this part of the city, and it continues to be done. Yeah, right outside. Still building. <laughs> That's only about uh, two, three hundred yards away. Uh, residential stuff also. Not just uh, you know, businesses. Yeah. A number of the players for the Rockies will live in this area of town. They walk to work or, or uh, drive a very short distance, but a lot of them, a number of them, I should say, would live in the downtown area. I only did that once. When I was with the, the Phillies. And I lived uh, right by the ballpark. They have a little walk to work and there's certainly something to be said for that. I enjoyed that just being able to you know, five ten minute walk home after after the game at night. Two two to Walker. Foul off again. Like there's a a Philly sitting right behind home plate. Somebody with a Philly hat on. There's the gentleman. Doesn't doesn't realize that the sun has already set. <laughs> well, the count is full to Walker. He's not watching the game. I don't know what he's no, looking no, at. He's looking at the. Uh, he's looking at that. There you go. And the three ball two strike pitch to Walker. In the air to left center. Dickerson under it. And that's the out. So one out in the Pirates half of the seventh. Let's look at the road ahead for the Pirates brought to you by Nissan tomorrow for the Bucks. Jeff Locke making his 10th start of the year. His first nine starts. He's walked just eight. Has posted an ERA of 305 for the Rockies. It'll be Tyler Matzik who matched up against Locke last time out and gave up three runs on seven hits in six innings. Then Sunday, Edison Volquez will take on Franklin Morales. As uh, Rockies have let us know, it will be Morales on Sunday. She keeps dropping that hook in to get ahead of hitters. First pitch to Martin. He dropped it right in there, about bell high. That's the same kind of outing, similar outing that he had, except a little better so far than he well, had he, last he's got time out. Better velocity, I believe. And not to where I think it's a big difference. It should be making a difference. But I think he's got a, well, maybe averaging a mile and a half, maybe two mile an hour. More than what uh, we saw, at least from what I can remember. And Russell Martin has walked three times tonight. Anderson with 102 pitches, so he's getting close to where the Rockies would get somebody up. Looks like actually there's now going to be action in the Rockies bullpen. Thank goodness. That's what I said. That's what we need. And, and now they're going to go out and see if he's okay. Manager, pitching coach, and trainer coming out to check on Anderson, who Looking doesn't look like finger. he's had any kind of problems at all tonight. Looking at his finger. Keith Duggar, the trainer, 
for the Rockies uh, getting a first look at it. Didn't like his initial reaction when he saw it. Well, that's it. He's out. So Anderson is out of the ball game. And Canely looks like he's going to be the one to come in. And he'll get as many pitches as he needs to warm up. And Anderson not very pleased right now. He was on a roll. Pitching a two hit shutout in the seventh inning has to leave the game. And Tommy Canely will come in, so the bullpen will get activated for the Rockies. One nothing Colorado. We'll be back after this pitching change timeout. Cincinnati has lost to Washington four to one. They've now lost seven straight. Well, the Pirates half game ahead of the Cardinals. The Brewers three up on the Buccos, and a blister on the index finger of the pitching hand. Uh, the starting uh, pitcher Brett Anderson. Well, maybe a nail, but uh, they're looking at the tip of that finger. I don't know. Watch his reaction. This, that wasn't the last pitch. You know something's happening there. But watch the trainer's reaction when he sees it. Watch his head. See, see him bob his head like. I mean, very unhappy about it. Immediately thinking, oh, he, he can't continue. Anderson out of the ball game, six and a third innings, two hits, no earned runs. It's a good sign, I believe, that uh, you know he did stay in the dugout. If there was something, you know, wrong with the the finger in that knuckle area, or, or something to do with when he broke the finger, you would think that they would have him, you know, the trainer's room immediately. The fact that he stayed out there, and uh, and as you pointed out, they were looking at the tip of the finger. Then hopefully it is just a, a a nail lifting up a little bit, or or perhaps a a, a blister. And shaking his head, they probably was only going to be out there for two more outs anyway, though, uh, because he was already over a hundred pitches. So. Jordy Mercer will be the first to face Tommy Canley. Don't 
forget. As you're getting ready to have a cold one, don't forget Miller time later in tonight's broadcast. Brought to you by Miller Lite. So into the bullpen, the Pirates go. One on, one out. Top of the seventh inning, a one nothing Colorado lead. They got some work against the Pirates in that last series and a couple of appearances. Picked up in the Rule 5 draft by the Rockies in 2013. And Rosario needs to get on the same page with him early. You know, in the series we saw at PNC Park, the starting staff for the Rockies stepped up. They did a very good job. For the first six or seven innings, but then the Rockies it, bullpen gave it back. Was it Kingley, the guy that couldn't see the signs? I believe you're right. And then when he started going to the uh, the touches, the external, yeah, I think that's probably what that was about. First pitch inside for a ball. As you already had your little talk on the mound, just pitch before that. See if he gives external signs or fingers. No, it looks like he's still in the fingers. You're wrong. I thought it was Kingley that called him out at PNC Park, and then they started doing the uh, external signs, the touches, you know, the mask, the right. shin guard, that stuff, the to call, fastball, curveball, slider, all that. Some guys that just have such a hard time seeing fingers that you have to go to that. Kingley appeared in two of the three games last week. Jordy files it back two and one. Rockies relievers threw a lot of pitches too per inning. At least ten more pitches per inning than the Pirates relievers did. And then sweep at PNC Park. Average 23 and a half pitches per inning. Well, the Pirates relievers average 13 and a half pitches per inning. Three and one to Mercer. Also, Pirate hitters hit 424 against them. And the Rocky hitters hit 211 against the Pirates bullpen. Brent Morell on deck. Happy to be back, getting a chance in the big leagues. 3 1 to Mercer. There goes Martin, and Mercer fouls it back. Trying to stay out of a double play. But Martin running on the 3 1 pitch, you think he would go again on a full count. One out, top of the seventh. Jordy Mercer, 0 for 2 tonight. Here is the pitch from Canley. There goes Martin. And Jordy lifts this one in the air to left field, playable for Dickerson. Hurdle will take Brent Morell out of the ball game, and now Pedro Alvarez will come up. Out there's a right-handed pitcher on the hill. Pedro will get the bat here late in the ball game with Martin at first base. There's a lefty in the bullpen. It uh, doesn't look like Weiss is uh, going to be moving. He'll sit still in the dugout. As Alvarez was late. Coming out, Clint sent him out very late. And Morell on deck. So Wilson and Freire warming up. Freire the right-hander, Wilson the lefty. And then very late in that at bat, 
Went pulled Morell out of the circle and put Pedro up there. And a strike called to Alvarez. He left Tuesday night's game with left knee discomfort. Rex Brothers in the pen for the Rockies. Pedro's hit safely in three straight. One ball and one strike. This represents the tying run. Pedro's 15 home runs, second most among National League third basemen. The leader, Cincinnati's Todd Frazier, with 18. And the Reds lost again today. Cardinals lost today. Pitch to Pedro. Swung in on a chopper foul. One and two to Alvarez. Looking by Canely. Now the stretch. Martin off of first. Rosario setting up outside. And Pedro chased one. Strikes out. And the half inning comes to an end. It is stretch time in Colorado, middle of the seventh. Rockies one, Pirates nothing. Shots of the city of Denver, Colorado. 16th Street Mall in downtown. State 25, it runs north to south right through it. And Charlie Morton has just given up the one run in the third inning, a leadoff triple by DJ LeMay, who led to a run. Josh Rutledge, an RBI double. Well, Charlie is really a Pitching a lot of games kind of like this, hasn't he? He has. He's just uh, not getting a lot of run support, uh, unearned runs against him. He can have so many more wins now than he does. Ben Paulson. First baseman takes a strike. Paulson has reached base safely twice in each of his first four games as a Rocky. The only other Rocky to do that was. Todd Helton in 1997. Pedro Alvarez stays in the game at third. Here's the pitch. Inside. Two and one to Paulson. 
Fred Anderson for six and a third innings presented trouble for the Pirates. He was very, very tough. Had his fastball tonight, coupled that with his breaking pitch. Had to leave due to a blister on his left index finger. Or a problem with his left index finger. That one's a fair ball, brings up Chalk. And Polanco will have to chase it into the right corner. And Paulson is in with a double. It's his second one. Lead off extra base hit for the Rockies first baseman. Yeah, just barely keep it fair. Watch the chalk come up. See that, all that white stuff. Got down into the corner. Luckily it didn't uh, roll around any further. And allow Paulson to, to go into third. He was making the decision himself. See that he's looking over his shoulder the whole time. Never never looked over at the uh, third base coach at all. Three straight multi-hit games for him. And they like you when the ball's behind you like that. that Look at your third base coach and let, let him make the decision. You're looking over your shoulder. Well, in Rosario takes the ball. Rosario tonight is one for two. Had a single last time up in the fourth. You don't see a lot of one nothing games here in Colorado. Not many at all. To the gap in left center field. That's going all the way to the wall. Paulson around third. He will score. And Rosario around second base with a run scoring double. It is two to nothing. It looked like one of those two centers that just didn't have a whole lot on it. Didn't move much. To back doubles for Colorado in the bottom of the seventh. Rosario able to get down underneath this pitch. Instead of hitting a ground ball to short, it ends up being a gap shot. Just 89 miles an hour. That's uh, not much velocity for a Morton fastball. Double number 16 for Willene Rosario. Ray Sirich will head out and have a word with Charlie. Pirates bullpen going. Paulson got it started with a leadoff double. And the next pitch uh, for Charlie will be his 90th. And he's been effective to this point of the game with his pitches in terms of uh, the economics of them, but. Six hits and four of the six hits have gone for extra bases. Three doubles and a triple and two singles. Ernesto Freire up for the second time throwing for the Pirates. And LeMayhew looks to show Bunt. Rosario heads back to the back quickly on the bluff throw from Russell Martin. Rosario at second base, nobody out. And LeMayhew pulls the bat back, chops it into left field, a base hit. They will hold Rosario at third base. And now runners at the corners and nobody out. Charlie, a little bit of trouble. Well, Charlie's a, not really throwing all that hard this inning. Another one of those fastballs again, just 89 miles an hour. And uh, here comes Clint Hurdle. That'll be the last one uh, of the night. Drew Stubbs, who had been in the on deck circle as a pinch hitter, went to the plate. He'll have to go back to the on deck circle right now as Clint will make the change, and Ernesto Frieri, another right hander, will come in to pitch. 2 0 Colorado, bottom of the seventh. Nobody out.
you on that? Ha <laughs> I was on that. Yeah, I mean, I got to ask Cutch. He's been to a couple of these. Here, Tony Watson, talk more on All Star Fashion with Josh Harrison and Andrew McCutcheon as we take you behind the scenes of the Buckos All Star trip to Minneapolis. Check out the Pirates' red carpet arrival. See the guys mic'd up for batting practice and much more. It's inside Pirates Baseball, Twin City Trio debuts Monday at 9 on Route Sports. 2 0 Rockies, bottom of the seventh, two on, nobody out. Charlie Morton finished. For the evening after going six plus three batters gave up three straight hits two doubles and a single to start at the bottom of the seventh and now Ernesto Frieri is on and he has looked much better lately. He, had a yeah, he has in the pitched road. A, a lot better of late uh, he's been getting a few more swings and misses on that slider which is important for him. I think that uh, is one of the things that he and the Pirates both are going to be looking for is to try and get back to that point to where he was a strikeout guy. Where hitters were you know, coming up empty, no contact more often than not. When he had better times uh, with the Angels, he got a lot of strikeouts. Facing Stubbs, infield drawn in. And he delivers a strike. Six straight scoreless innings for Frieri. Monday and Tuesday nights against the Dodgers worked scoreless innings as well. Stops hitting 297. Outfielder coming off the bench to pinch hit in the nine spot in the bottom of the seventh inning. A little bit low to first. Looks like he got caught up in LeMahieu's leg. He was stuck. Strike two right by him. And Stubbs had issues with the strikeout while with Cincinnati. Good heat on this one. 95. Located well. Had the uh, letters. Now, if Stubbs would have had offensive numbers like he has here at, in Colorado and Cincinnati, he'd probably still be in Cincinnati. Right? He's an outstanding defensive center fielder. A bouncer to third base. It's over the head of Alvarez into left field. Rockies allowed another run. LeMahieu coming to third. Safe at third is DJ LeMahieu. And Stubbs over to second base. 3 0 Colorado. Close play at third. I wonder if the Pirates will look at this one. All chopped at the plate. I think Pedro uh, really thought he was going to get that one. He was surprised that he didn't come down with it. This is the play I was talking about. Now nah, he's in there. Thought maybe it was a little closer than that. It didn't look like Pedro kind of thought he was going to make that play the way he was like moving already toward the uh, toward home to, to make a throw. It did. Second and third now. And still nobody out. And they're going to walk Blackman to load the bases. Four straight hits for the Rockies. And with the intentional walk, five straight men will have reached base. Run with Rosario scoring is charged to Charlie Morton, and he is still responsible for LeMahieu, who is at third base. And the bases are full of Rockies. And Charlie's ERA is going up a little bit tonight. Came in at 3.28. Sitting at 333 currently. That hit for Stubbs, by the way, has been ruled a double, not a single, and down to second on the throw. They uh, sent us word from the official score that that'll be a double for Stubbs. And the pitch now to Rutledge. 
It's up and in. Need one of those uh, one hoppers back to the mound. Well, home the first double play. You know, that is what we're looking for now. I know that's being a little specific, but that's what I want. A, a jam shot, one hopper. Right back to free area. Quick throw home, and then uh, another one to first. Throw down to first base. Getting back is Blackman. Mayhew at third base. Remember, he was showing bunt and then kept the bat back and not going through the vacant left side of the infield. This is big time trouble. Going to the wall. LeMahieu will score. Stubbs right behind him. Here comes Blackman. Josh Rutledge has cleared the bases. It's six nothing Colorado. As an offense, you're always looking for a a big hit. I've talked about this a lot over the last two or three weeks. The, the big hit in the right moment to break the game open, put the game away. Uh, that's what the the Rockies uh, accomplished with that. Now it's a tight ball game to this point. The, the, the opportunity is there to do something special, and you come up with a gap shot. One hop, the outfield wall, and everybody scores. Which is exactly what you're trying to avoid, obviously, when you're on defense. Stay away from those big innings. They. They're the big innings, the crooked numbers, that's what win ball games more often than not. Pitch now to Corey Dickerson as a strike. Now this year, when the Rockies have had winning or losing streaks, rather, of four or more games, and they had lost seven straight before they got a win in their last ball game, the next game they had always lost. They were 0 for 4. Trying to win back to back games following long losing skits. But tonight, they put a pretty good down payment on back to back wins. It'll be tough now. Six down with the Pirates with six outs left. Charlie Morton will get charged for four runs. Area for two so far this inning. And Dickerson with a swinging strike. It's one and two. The Mets have a home run from Lucas Duda and have taken a 3 2 lead over the Brewers in Milwaukee in the top of the ninth. At least we can give you a little good news. Ross couldn't hang on. So it stays one and two to Corey Dickerson. That one that got the mask off his face so quick. Ooh, that's a pretty good hit. Yeah. Thought he hit the he's glove tough. first. Looked like it missed it. You see the way the, his head jerks back and he. Act like it was nothing. That's a, uh, pretty tough little catcher right there. Looper to right field. Here comes Polanco to make the running catch. Throw to second. Safe is Rutledge. One out now for the Rockies. Not for sure he's going to be doubled off. And he got off there way too far, really. A, you know, kind of pushing the envelope. A nice quick release. That was just. Uh, must be real quick, a lot quicker than I thought. He went halfway, and I, I, in my mind, he wasn't going to make it back. He did. So, Clint Hurdle is coming out, and he wants to talk to Tom Hallion. Well, maybe. 
Clint thinks Rutledge might not be that quick either. He just came out to pay him a visit. Uh, say hi. Must have got a, uh, a thumbs down. Red light. Maybe that's another way to do it. Put like a stoplight in the dugout. Oh, we had a long conversation yesterday. Oh, game about I missed that ways. yesterday. Yeah. Talked about lights and colored cards and just a sign that says challenge or don't challenge or all kinds of different ways other than the thumbs. You can't see from there. I'm blocked a little bit. Carlos Gonzalez awaits the 1 0 from Ernesto Frieri. Gotta buy him. 1 and 1. Now Frieri had pitched well at Coors Field prior to uh, tonight. His ERA here in his career was 084. Ended up giving up that bases clearing double to Rutledge. Gonzalez to right field and deep. Polanco back. He looks up. It's gone. A home run. Carlos Gonzalez with home run number 10. And it is now 8 to nothing, Colorado. Well, my guess is that 084 is not very many innings. And because there's uh, not very many innings, it will skyrocket tonight. Take a look at the pitch. Uh, change up, I think. Yeah, then you always going to take a beating tonight. Base is clear, one out. Culberson files this one back. Because that's one of the things that a lot of people will, will scoff at for relievers, the ERA numbers, because they can move around so much. They look at a lot of more uh, modern metrics to figure out things about pitchers, uh, relief pitchers in particular. Gonzalez with RBIs 35 and 36. But I barely know how to figure out an ERA, so I have to stick with the ERA. It's now 409 here. Went up fast. Yep. Culberson strikes out. So two gone. And Ben Paulson, who started the sending off with a double, is up for the second time in the bottom of the seventh. It's tough to move your uh, move an ERA three runs over three runs in, in just an inning of work. And overall on the season. For Freire, his ERA with the Pirates at 751 currently. Pitch to Paulson, swing and a miss. Well, that's right there is what he needs more of the swing and a miss. Seven runs in the seventh for the Rockies. 0 oh 2 to Paulson. In 73 games at Coors Field before tonight. The Pirates have been shut out just three times. Back to back games April 30th and May 1st in 2002 and, and August of 09. We're shut out eight to nothing. I had a feeling the game was not going to stay one to nothing. They've only had eight one nothing games here. In the history of this ballpark. Well, I am sure surprised at the zero up there for the Pirates. Just two hits tonight. I really truly thought they were going to do much better against Anderson seeing him for a second time. Here at Coors Field. Uh, obviously, obviously it's still a great place to hit. 
But uh, the guys didn't do much tonight. And Russell needed a minute, shaking up. Two two pitch to Paulson. And Freire strikes him out. Seven runs for the Rockies. We go to the eight. Pirates down eight nothing. The Rockies scored a touchdown late in the third quarter. Two run home run by Carlos Gonzalez, his 10th homer of the season. And oh, long faces from some of the Pirate fans here. So some changes, or a change anyway. Rex Brothers, the lefty, coming up. This will be his 50th appearance. He's now. Third in appearances in the National League behind Will Smith of Milwaukee and Brad Ziegler of Arizona, who have 52 each. Rally cap. And Martinez takes a strike. Switch hitter. Pinch hitting in the eighth inning. No opponent has been shut out at Coors Field this season. No, we can try for that. I don't know if that's something we'll try for. It's probably going to happen at some point. No, I mean try not to be shut. Oh, out. exactly. I thought you meant try to <laughs> get shut up. <laughs> no, so I, mean, I, I would don't agree with you. No, I, I, yeah, no, I don't want to try for that. I want to try not to. I don't want to be the first. You can make your mark in other ways. Yes. Well, hopefully the way the the Rocky bullpen performed in Pennsylvania will be able to get at least a. Couple of runs tonight before it's over. Martinez strikes out on the ball in the dirt. One out. Well, the bullpen has been the story of the series, but heavily weighted in favor of the Pirates. But tonight, Pirates bullpen, four earned runs, three inherited runners scored. It's all been Ernesto Freire. Yeah, just to, couldn't be any, any more different than uh, what happened at PNC last week. Gregory Polanco will look for his first hit. Tough night for Ernie. He had a good string going. With six straight scoreless appearances. Did not go his way tonight. And Polanco facing another left hander.
248 the average for Polanco. One ball, one strike. Just two thirds of an inning in relief of Anderson who had to leave the game with a finger injury. And now Rex Brothers, third pitcher used by Walt Weiss tonight. Pirates had won five of the last six ball games, including three against the Rockies. Said there'd be days like this. I'm hoping to get off on the right foot. But, you know, once things go south and you can't dwell on it, you can quickly uh, turn that page and get back after him again tomorrow. 2 2 and Polanco hits at the center field. Blackman backed up, makes the catch, and they're two gone. Here is tonight's Barrel Automotive League leader stat. Teams with the highest winning percentage against one division of the Pirates against the National League West and National League East. On top of the list, Brewers against the NL West doing a good job there, too. Barrel Automotive League leader stat. Josh Harrison is 0 for 3. Pitch in for a strike. Pirates with just two hits in the game. Neil Walker has one. And Andrew McCutcheon has one. Eight runs on ten hits. The big inning, the seventh. Turned a one nothing game into an eight nothing game. Only Pimentel getting up. Stormy will pitch the bottom of the eighth. And Harrison, a ground ball in the left field, a base hit. Two out single for Josh, just the third hit tonight by the Bucks. Weiss is going to make a pitching change. Doesn't want McCutcheon to face the lefty. So right-hander coming on for the Rockies. And we will be back after this pitching change timeout. Colorado eight and the Pirates nothing.
was sent in from Dave Poling, and that is a sign when I put on my uniform. I feel like I feel I am the proudest man on earth. It was a quote from Roberto Clemente, and that is the sign that hangs over the the stairway where the players at PNC Park go down to the dugout. Keep those submissions coming at hashtag Bucks fan photo. Here at Coors Field, two men out. Andrew McCutcheon coming up. He'll face Nick Massett. Rex Brothers is out after getting the first two outs, giving up one hit. Well, after what happened uh, in the last series, not taking any chances. Mm -hmm. Going right to the bullpen, uh, even with a, a big eight run lead, bringing in uh, Massett and all the right handers coming up. McCutcheon a swing and a miss. That struck out once, grounded out to short, and had a base hit through the hole on the left side of the infield in the sixth inning. And Walt Weiss saying, no, it one. no chance this time. No come from behind wins. And with two outs, he was not going to let the uh, brothers face McCutcheon. Massett, a familiar foe. He had been with the Cincinnati Reds up until 2011. One and two. Massett lives in Odessa, Florida, 32 years of age. Then with the Texas Rangers and the Chicago White Sox, along with Cincinnati. Didn't pitch last year, is injured. Strikes out Andrew McCutcheon. That's frustrated. As are the Pirates hitters tonight. Three hits and no runs. After Nothing. Rockies in front of the Pirates. Great shots at Denver. We'll need City. Chris Stewart will be doing the catching the rest of the way tonight. And stole me Pimentel. Will come on to pitch to the Rockies in the bottom of the eighth. Pimentel's uh, numbers on the year just 13 ball games. He hasn't been. Uh, Used all that much, obviously, and he also spent some time on the DL, pitching in a lot of games, kind of like this, uh, either early when a starter gets knocked out or late when the game is one-sided. So, 
Stewart behind the plate. And Russell was shaking up a bit. Yeah, before that, there, uh, maybe. That, that was before the last pitch. Hopefully he's okay. Uh, definitely a, a something bothering him. He had to reach quickly out there to make that catch. Malin Rosario takes a strike. Rosario two for three tonight. He doubled last time up and scored and singled in the fourth. Nothing in two. Two forty three the average for the Rockies catcher. Colorado sitting in the basement of the West. Fifteen and a half games out. Prior to this one tonight. And Rosario down on strikes. Pimentel comes out of the bullpen strikes out the first man he faces. Rosario up, DJ LeMay who do up next. Yeah, I know the Pirates that, you know, still think of Pimentel as a possible uh, starting pitcher down the road. Because of the, the, the lack of uh, work he's got this year, if he might do a little wintertime pitching, see if he can get some extended out. That would be possible. A lot of guys do it. If Pimentel still had an option, he would have probably still been in a rotation uh, down at AAA this year, getting regular work and being ready if needed. But no more options, so he's had to sit in the bullpen all year. Popped up down the right side. Here's Polanco. And foul ground. He makes the catch two down. Well, final score now from Milwaukee. The Mets have won it three to two. So the Pirates won't lose any ground. They can't come back and get eight runs in the ninth inning. Brandon Barnes will be the hitter. Matt Belisle warming up. Pirates got to Belisle in Pittsburgh twice. He'll have a little cushion this time. Harrison on the run. He'll have room to make the over the shoulder catch. One, two, three, go the Rockies. And we'll go to the ninth inning in Denver. Colorado eight and the Pirates nothing. On three hits for the Pirates. 
And in 1,584 games here at Coors Field, only six teams have been shut out here while recording only three hits or fewer. And two of the six times were the Pirates. 2002 on back to back days, April 30th and May 1st. And 10 0 and 6 0 shutout losses by the Buccos. So Matt Belisle will mop up duty tonight. We'll be uh, hoping to put up a zero. The ERA needs some uh, polish. Five and a half. Opponent batting average pushing 300. Not pretty numbers at all. Gabby Sanchez, Neil Walker, and perhaps Ike Davis. Davis has a helmet on in the dugout. Holding a bat. Nothing in one to Sanchez. Top of the ninth inning. And the pitch. That's down low. One ball and one strike. This is one of those games, perhaps, Bob, where as, uh, Gabby grounds this one into center field and the base hit. Just out of the reach of Rutledge. And they don't single for Sanchez. He's now one for four. I going to say one of those games, perhaps, where Clint Hurdle afterward would say, just have to shower well. Come back, get after it again. Whatever. The saying you want to put on it, you know, turn the page. What? It doesn't matter. It all means the same thing. Forget about it. it doesn't mean anything. It's a loss. One nothing, eight nothing. All counts for the same thing. You, know, you just talked about that Mets score, three to two over Milwaukee. What well, doesn't it? You know, that could have been ten to two. It's, it's a baseball game. You just got to go on, and uh, there'll be another one tomorrow. Got to got to have a little bit of a, of a short memory in this game. First of a 10 game Western road trip for the Pirates. Rockies three outs away from their 42nd win of the year. And pitch into Walker gets to bat left handed. Two balls and no strikes. At least get the zero off the board. That would be nice. Davis ready to go. We'll hit next. And a strike call. Belial took the loss in two of the three games last weekend at Pittsburgh. Three and one the count. Here's the pitch to Neal. That's ball four, and the Pirates have two on. With nobody out. Well, he won't get the loss tonight. Uh, even if there is one to get, he won't be out there that long. But he's kind of trying to push it that way, isn't he? <laughs> he is. Yeah, eight to nothing, and he can't throw a strike. And you'd figure he'd be throwing nothing but strikes, and. At least at the beginning of the inning, attempting to let the hitters get themselves out. Gabby with a base hit, Walker with a, a base on balls, and he is at first. So nobody out for Ike Davis. And the pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Yeah, pretty borderline. Might have got one there. Tomorrow, Jeff Locke at two and one. Tyler Matzik, he's one and four, both left handers. 8 10 Eastern time, the first pitch. That'll be game two. Jeff has looked very good in recent days. 
Here's the 1 1. That's in for a strike, 1 and 2 to Davis. Getting 237. He's got two bucks on the pond right here. And the pitch from Belial swung on foul back. I waited right to the end of the game, but you got one. Well, he's got that one wrapped up to both hands. I he's not even really showing it to anybody. I want that to get away. Davis, a ground ball into left field. That's a base hit. Gabby will be held at third. The base is full of bucks. So Bilal comes out of the bullpen. Pirates load the bases with two hits and a walk. Fastball and hitting a good spot. And there's nobody throwing in the bullpen. No. And I realize it's eight nothing. Well, Jim Wright, the pitching coach. Well, that's going to change because Adam Ottavino has just gotten on. It was, it was eight nothing last inning too, and <laughs> the pitching change with two outs uh, just to bring in uh, a right-hander to pitch to McCutcheon. Now somebody's getting up for him. Well, so right now they're, they're shut out on the verge of ending here. There's out of Vino. So the bases are loaded and nobody out for Jordy. Mercer without a hit. And this is going to get a run in. As Blackman continues to drift back, he makes the catch. Gabby will tag from third and score. It's now eight to one. Now you get your wish. No shutout. No shutout. That's the first thing. Sacrifice fly for Mercer. His 33rd run batted in. And Walker goes down to third base. Pedro is up. Pedro cut this lead in half with one swing. Last home run came on the 11th at Cincinnati. Pitch outside for a ball to Alvarez. Pedro's hitting 238. He's had one at bat tonight. He struck out in the seventh inning. As a pinch hitter, he stayed in to play third. Time is called. I, I don't know why he called time so late. Chris Guccione, the umpire, gave the timeout if Pedro called it. Guccione does not have to give him the timeout. I mean, Belial was almost throwing the baseball there. Oh, pitch outside. I think we saw in a game with the Rangers not long ago. Adrian Beltre called time late, didn't get it. And the pitch was called a strike on him. And he was surprised. That was a couple of weeks ago. Nothing wrong with Belial out there. He called time. He's rubbing his hand in the grass. Waltz. What the heck's going on? Waltz out there? thinking, let's go. He walked behind the, the, the mound and. He's rubbing his hand in the grass, his pitching hand. Not sure what all that was about. 91 mile an hour fastball, swing and a miss, two and one.
Here's the 2 1. 3 and 1. Now Belial will pitch away from loading up the bases. Pirates batting in the top of the ninth inning. One out, two on, one in. Ball four, bases loaded. Second walk issued by Belial. Walt Weiss can come out and get him. Another pitching change at Coors Field. As Walt Weiss will relieve Matt Belial of duty and Adam Ottavino. The guy he really didn't feel he had to go to tonight. He'll have to go to him with one out in the ninth. So Belial got one out, and it was a very deep fly ball by Jordy Mercer that scored Gabby Sanchez. 8 1 is the score. Carling Marte on the seven day concussion disabled list. And the guy who hit him in the helmet with a pitch is out there to throw now, Adam Ottavino. Ottavino has been called upon to get the final two outs of this ball game by his manager, Walt Weiss, who did not seem very happy when he made the trek out of the first base dugout to relieve Matt Belial of duty. Oh, Ottavino, when he hit. Uh, Marte Marte was able to stay in the game. And with a good fastball really squared it up right on top of the helmet. But since then he's. He had some. Um, concussion symptoms so the Pirates put him on that seven day DL. Chris Stewart follows the first pitch off. He definitely uh, took a big hit. Pitch to Stewart. Popped him up right side of the infield. And Paulson will put it away. Infield fly, automatic out. And the Pirates down to their last out tonight. It'll be up to Gregory Polanco. Polanco is 0 for 4. Blanco gets to hit off a right hander. I don't like that. He's probably thinking it's about time. Mm -hmm. Still hitting over 300 against right handed pitching. It's the lefties that's been the problem. A 1 0 pitch to Gregory Polanco. And it's 1 1. Well, 
Bronco trying to keep it alive and get Harrison in that bat. The one one. Strike call, delayed call by home plate umpire Chris Guccione. Now the Pirates down to their last strike. Everybody up at Coors Field. One of the better games the Rockies have played this entire season tonight. One two pitch. And Polanco to third base. Culberson throws to second. Out at second is Alvarez. And the ball game is over. And the Rockies take game one with an eight to one win. Gonzalez with a two run home run. Rutledge had a couple of RBI doubles. And Brett Anderson's going to come away with a victory in this one tonight. His first of the year. Charlie Morton will suffer the loss. And the Pirates now 54 and 48. Six Actually, games over 500. Well, Charlie did a pretty good job tonight. Uh, you know, things fell apart there at the end. But, uh, you know, bullpen did him no favors, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, it was more the same for Charlie. You know, just nothing to work with. They didn't get him any runs. And, uh, you know, I've said this a couple times already tonight. I really thought that the Pirates offense was going to do a better job against Anderson tonight. And, Anderson actually looked like he made it look easier than uh, that really good game that he had at PNC Park. So Walt Weiss's team comes away with an eight to one win in game one here at Coors Field tonight. Let's go back to Pittsburgh. Paul Alexander and Ken Maka are standing by. <laughs> 